Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Let Me Boy You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Oh, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So this is Q and A Friday. Q and A Friday. Welcome everybody. So I'd like to say a big thank you. Blimey. That wasn't what's supposed to happen. Go away. Da, da. Okay. Right. I'd like to say a big thank you to Maureen and Paul for your PayPal gifts. Thank you very much. Very helpful at the moment, so I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'd also also like to say a big thank you to Molly, the boss, for being the boss, bossing everyone around. <laughs> so thank you for to Molly for helping, well, basically for running the uh, Jason Newland's Boring Group on Facebook. Let's have a look. Uh-huh. Right. So I'm just going on to Facebook to... Uh, oh, also, I want to say a big welcome to new members of the group. Thank you for joining. We've now got 177. Uh, I know that's not like a huge amount of people, but it's still nice to have... Uh, if nothing else, it's nice to have a a name to some of the people that are listening or watching my videos and um, podcasts. So that's nice. I haven't got an awful lot of... Uh, Ugh, energy. That's warm again, isn't it? I haven't got a lot of um, questions to answer, so this is not going to be a long recording. As far as obviously, it's going to be ten hours long. If you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening to the ten hour version, it will still be ten hours long. Um. So, also a shout out to Boston Chicky, who's joined, and. Um, the group as well. She's an old friend of mine that I've known for since I was a youngster. I was a youngin. Um, she's actually known. Her name's Andrea, but I, I've never called her Andrea. I've always called her Boston. So, welcome to Boston. And what other bits of thing is there? That's it. It's very warm. I'm gonna have to take my top off. I think. Don't get too excited. Oh, oh, that's a bit cold. <laughs> ah, you know, the good thing about this is, um, this is something I can't do anywhere else in the world. Just take my top off and just enjoy being topless. Right. I said, if it's getting any hotter, I'm going to have to take my bra off as well. So, what questions do I have for today? Ooh. Right. Uh, right, so I've only got two, which is okay. <sighs> so I'll answer them as quick as possible, as you know I normally do. I'm a very quick answerer. Uh, got one from Diana and one from Hillary. Although I did also, I had, so I posted this, I posted it twice, and it, I posted Thursday, I think, it's Q&A time anyway, again, any questions, so I've got Tammy put, this isn't a question, but rather an expression of deep gratitude, for those who might still have doubts about hypnosis, I want to share my experience, oh, cool. Have I not replied to this? Blimey, I'm sorry. Sorry, I've not replied to this one. 
I should I need to reply. I'll reply now, but I'll reply on on Facebook as well. Um, what's it say? Uh, I want to share my experience. It's been over fourteen months since I listened to your Stop Smoking podcast, and the impact has been lasting. I occasionally visit it for a refresher, but it continues to work effectively. Thank you sincerely. I can't even say the words today. Sincerely, sincerely, thank you. Um, Tammy, um, this is. I would be interested. Which is there a specific recording out of the stop smoking ones? Because I've got a few there. Is there a specific one that you found most useful? Because uh, I've got. Yeah, there's a few on there, so that'd be interesting to know. And Joanne says. Uh, I thought of a really good question to ask last night while I was listening to you, but I fell asleep and I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> that's brilliant. I, the amount of times that that's happened to me where I'm just like, I've got an idea and I fall asleep and it's probably the best idea I've ever had in my entire life. <sighs> but you know, you know, like uh, I've got this this idea that's going to change the world, and I fall asleep and I wake up. Usually, well, I say usually quite often. I never remember it, but occasionally I like will wake up and I'll like, oh, what was it? What was it? And then later in the day, like it'll just pop, like, oh, invent the light bulb, and it's like, oh, okay, I remember it now. And then I maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Maybe two hundred years ago would have been a good idea. So, Tammy, this is, is, I'm going to stick a pair, thank you, thank you for your kind words, so I would be interested to hear what, if there was a specific recording though, that'd be cool, um, okay, so the questions I've got, if I can find it again I've been posting quite a lot of stuff lately where okay Diana and Hillary Diana says what are some weird things that Vinny does my girl chases shadows inside and out wow I mean yeah he's, he's never done that do you know that thing where people they shine a light, like you can get those light pointer lights, not the dangerous ones that can blind planes, but the, you know, the ones that you can shine against the wall. And I think sometimes he's in for cats and some dogs will like try and chase it. Vinny, no interest. Just that he's not, for some reason it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't it really bother him. He doesn't, it doesn't like, not interest in stuff like that. Um, the weird things he does um, he's got definitely got some some unusual things so like every time I turn on the recorder to, to make a podcast he just appears if he's in the bed asleep or if he wherever, he'll just wake up instantly running. I don't even know why. I don't get it. I mean, he's and he'll stand and just always sit and stare at me. Whenever I start talking into the microphone, he just, you know, he just like stares at me. So if he's already in here and I turn on the recorder, he's watching me anyway, so he knows I'm doing that. But as soon as I start talking, he's there just staring at me. But now a little bit less for for less time. Like right now he's under the table, he's chewing on a bone, and he's happy again. He just I have to kind of ignore him. So, so if I make a fuss, like you're all right, what do you want? What do you want? He, he doesn't he doesn't leave me alone. But if I just ignore it, well, ignore it, ignore ignore him to the point of like just get on with the podcast. He's happy enough to be under the table. As long as he's with me, he's he's happy. I think. Weird things does he do? Um. 
is bungee jumping weird? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know, really. He's a sleepy head. I know that much. He sleeps way more than me. So we go to bed at 10 o'clock. Because I'm quite an early sleeper these days. Early to bed, early to rise. Okay, good boy. That's enough now. Don't you fart at me. Right, he just started barking. I might have to close that door. And I'm not making a video of this. I will make a video version of this recording, but it's too hot. I want, I want to have my top off, and I can't do that on a video because that would probably be classes X rated on YouTube. And you know, the idea is for people to listen, to relax, not to be getting excited <laughs> or or being made to feel sick. So, yeah, talking about that, I felt ill the other day. Oh. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I talked probably about too much, a little bit too much about what I was going to have for my evening meal. So I was going to have a cooked breakfast, which I did. But it was all in the oven. Uh, it wasn't, there was no fried food. There were vegetarian sausages. I only had three, and they're little sausages. Two eggs uh, poached. That's a weird word. Poached. And some beans, just that, you know, and also one tomato sliced up also in the oven and just like cooked that a little bit. Didn't have any bread. I had a um, a protein shake as well. So I don't know what it was, but I felt ill afterwards. Ill, ill, ill. Like to the point of... I'm not sure where this is going, Such, you know. Um, yeah, so I went into the park, took him for a walk, but I was walking around the park for about half an hour, slowly just trying to... I, I kind of, in a way, I, I, felt, I feel like I needed burping. Either I needed an ambulance or I needed burping. It was one of them two. Because I really, I'm serious, I, I was worried. I didn't know what the hell. Ugh. Um, I was having no, no trouble breathing. But I was having pains in my chest and my stomach. Which I get when I get indigestion. And I am on tablets for uh, acid reflux. So, you know, indigestion is something that happens sometimes. Uh, much It's really dependent upon food rather than anything else that's what I mean that's why it was quite easy to well that's why I stopped drinking coke I didn't stop drinking coke for the sugar content so much it was more to the fact that I was getting digestion if I drank a lot of coke so I stopped the coke a long time ago the coke the coke coca-cola um, I stopped that quite a long time ago long before I was told by the doctor that I needed to, that I was like pre-diabetic. So I seriously needed to change my diet. So in a way, stopping a Coke still didn't affect my blood sugar levels, unless my sh blood sugar levels were even higher then, which I kind of hope they were, which means it did help. Because if they're the same, if my blood sugar levels now are the same as they were when I was drinking six cans of Coke a day, then I think I'm pretty much guaranteed to be going the diabetic route because it's like I think maybe the damage is done. I really hope not. I really hope not. I'll find out in September when I have my bloods done again. But I have, you know, I haven't had any sugar. I've had no sugar in my tea. I've had no cakes, really. I've, I said, really. A neighbour brought some cakes, gave me some cakes a few a couple of weeks back. And I had a little, there were little cakes, and I had a couple. I did. I didn't like stuff them all down, but over a week I had a couple of cakes. So I got my hands up. I didn't have to tell you. Didn't have to tell you. Um, sixteen bars of chocolate yesterday. Apart from that, nothing else. Um. I had five pints of lager the day before, but apart from that, everything felt fine. I don't. Uh, 
there was that 17 burgers I had on Wednesday. No, I haven't. I've been really... I don't know if good is the right word, but um, careful with that stuff. So apart from the kind of tiny little cakes that my neighbour gave me, it was just a thank you for helping him out. I can't remember what I did. And he let me keep the plastic container, which was good. So I can put stuff in there. And yeah, so I've had no cakes. I've had, I can't even remember. I can't remember the last time I had chocolate. Genuinely, it's been that long. Although I've got a chocolate bar, I've got a crunchy bar in my fridge that a neighbour put through the door, a different neighbour, put through the letterbox for me. I'm not eating it. It's just there. I don't even want to eat it, which is the biggest lie I've told ever since I've been making podcasts, because I do want to eat it, and I want to eat it right now. But I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, it's calling my name. To be fair, I don't care. It was calling Susie or Darrell. I'd still be in there to get it. it. doesn't have to be called my name. Just it'd be a race against all my invisible friends. So, yeah. So who's watching the Olympics, anyone? Any, 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 anyone watching the Paris Olympics? I've not really watched it. What on earth was that sound? It literally sounded like one of my books just moved on their own. It's very strange. But he didn't notice that. Anyone turns their door handle downstairs, he's like, rah, 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 rah. A book moves by itself. Two foot away from where he's lying, he doesn't notice it. Uh, apparently we're supposed to have a thunderstorm soon but it's a, a lot cooler today it's still warm in here uh, because the TV lets off a lot of heat even though the TV hasn't been on for a couple of hours but still lets off a, quite a bit of heat and it's it's a warm day but I don't want to complain because it, you know blimey It'll be uh, it'll be chilly soon, so I'm not gonna get too worried about it being too hot. Cause the thing is, I don't. I'm not that bothered about the cold. Cause in the winter, it's supposed to be cold. It's just that's how it's supposed to be. And the lead up to the winter is not usually that bad anyway. It's it's colder. Like I'm old, it's cold, but it's just normal. And when it's freezing cold, we don't even get that many days where it's below minus in this country, like where I live anyway. I can't talk about other parts of the country because there's there's parts of the country where it gets really, really cold for a long time. Then you've got parts of the, the island I live on like Wales and Scotland, it gets super cold in the winter. Like really like minus, 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 minus degrees, some places. But we don't get like, it, it does get cold, but it doesn't get as cold as, it doesn't get like super duper cold for months on end. As far as like minus 10 or my, like New York, doesn't it get like minus 70 or something ridiculous like that and Russia I'm going to have to close the window in a minute because the screaming kids have come back it's been so nice I really thought it was a little bit of peace and quiet to make a podcast well if you can hear any background sounds and it's disturbing you just turn the recording off that's all I can really say because it's it's, it annoys me, but you can't hear as much as me because of the microphone. It's more, the microphone really only picks up my voice or what's in front of it. Um, it might pick up a little bit of the background sound with uh, screaming humans and stuff. But outside of that, it shouldn't, shouldn't be particularly loud. But I can hear it. 
um, a lot clearer. So, and I've got to stop talking about it because I don't mind. It's, it's just, in fact, I like, I like hearing people shouting. It's good. Makes me happy. So, so, say, 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 na, 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 na. am I going to actually answer the question that Diana asked? All right, blimey. Okay. So what are some of the weird things that Vinny does? I don't know if it's weird. He's got a thing of, Biting the lead. Just for no reason. He wants to play. Because I've got a new lead now. And it's a thick one. So it's even better. Because it's like rope. Really for him. And he can really bite hold of it. And he likes to play tug of war. And so. He likes this new rope. Or this new lead I've got. Uh, it's not a long lead. It's not one of those extendable ones because the the local shop didn't have one. The pet shop didn't have one. And I just thought, well, this cost me about eight pound, nine pounds. So it's a it was a lot cheaper than getting one of the expendable, expendable, extendable ones. So this makes more sense for now. Although I I will when I got the money, I think I'm gonna get a another one of those. And maybe alternate depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm going to the, if I'm just going to the park, I can use the extendable one, so we can go into the grass and stuff like that. But if I'm going to the, uh, let's say I'm going to the shop, or I'm going to the uh, pet shop or the sweet shop, that he calls it, I can put on the shorter lead which means I've got more control over him, where he is. Because the extendable lead, he just although there is a lock on it, it it's a very thin lead, and it's this just having the, the thick lead. Although it's, it's, it's not like really short, he can walk a fair bit ahead of me, but I can just wrap it around so that he's at my feet. And I prefer that when we are walking on a very small bit of pavement on which is basically a motorway now it's not a motorway but it leads to a motorway so you've got the same traffic going on to um, and yeah not coming off but going on to maybe going on to yeah going on to and coming off a motorway that's it, yeah. So it's it's a lot of traffic. But unlike a motorway, it's just like both sides of the road come going each way. But this it's it's not big they're not big roads, just a normal small road big enough for cars and you know, I suppose lorries and stuff, but there's there's literally inches between the cars going one way and going the other way divided by a, a white line they're powerful them white lines aren't they <laughs> I don't know who, whose idea that was I think they should be divided by a wall all, all, all roads divided by walls or maybe a glass wall indestructible glass walls so that people could see what's going the other way but they can keep them on their side or maybe I was thinking of this what would be good if you could get a a magnet so a magnet it's sort of like a, a a backward magnet that pushes stuff away on the pavement and on the wall the middle wall bit which means the car will have no no choice but to be in the middle, and will stay there. But not 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 power, powerful enough to keep it there forever. But you know, so it could still drive, go forward, but it would be stuck in the middle. And I might have sh this might either be a bit of genius, or it might have shown my lack of knowledge about how. Uh, magnets work but you know it's one of them 
it's a toss up, isn't it? So it's going to be one. So Diana, um, uh, 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 my girl, did you know, dirty Diana? Oh, did you know, Diana, and anyone else listening? Uh, and this is something that you might know, but you might not know. It's a true, very truthful thing. Is the in nineteen eighty eight when Michael Jackson brought his bad tour to London or to England, but he was performing at the Wembley, I imagine. Probably Wembley Stadium, not the arena. Because yeah, probably the it might be in this stadium, but I imagine it was the arena. I'm, I can I can't imagine there was one venue in the entire world that Michael Jackson could not fill. Um, just like there's not a venue in the whole world that Billie Eilish or Beyonce or any of the Justin Bieber or Harry Styles or any of the the, the stars of today um, could fill. They'd all they'd all fill whatever arena was available. You know, if you had 30,000 or 200,000, they'd fill it. But we just don't have stadiums with 200,000 people in them. I don't think such a stadium even exists in the world. I don't think. I think the maximum for Wembley in in London is 92,000 or something. They used to they used to fit more people when we were people were allowed to stand. So for things like football matches, people in the the styles, this is style, not styles, in the audience, um, the audience used to be able to stand, and you can fit like two, three times the amount of people, maybe four times the amount of people standing as you can seated, because the amount of room of seats take the rows of seats and stuff, but. Um, you know, from a health and safety perspective, seating is better, I guess, and more comfortable as well. But there's been uh, concerts and stuff in some countries like Brazil, where they had over a th- hundred thousand people. So I'm just wondering, what's the largest, largest? Cause, but it's outside though, largest outside concert, concert. The largest seats unique official site, Rod Stewart. What? Rod Stewart, nineteen ninety five, New York Eve concert at Copacabana, Copacabana Beach, Copacabana. Oh, he was lovely. What's his name? Mandy. Although I, I, I also had a song. Called Mandy. I like the songs that make the whole world sing. I like the songs that went for everything. Oh, he was, um, I can't remember his name. Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow. Oh, beautiful man. Beautiful. Um, yeah. I don't know why he waited to become gay. Why did he wait so long to become gay? Why? Why didn't he just... He, he was revered. He was absolutely loved by his audience. And would anyone have cared? I mean, it's, I know it's personal. It's got nothing to do with anyone else anyway. But just generally, like, well, he's... You know, it's, it's, it's like, I just don't... Like Elton John... I haven't even got married to try and put people off the scent. I would have argued or changed the things you were wearing on stage. <laughs> Maybe. But he's, you know, it's like, who cares? I suppose some people care, but I'm talking about it. Does that mean I care? No. No. Liberace, Liberace died and no one knew he was gay. Really? It's like, it doesn't matter. Liberace was great because of his performance and Elton John's great because of his songs and his 
stage performance and uh, I don't know is what what does that matter what they do in there you know who they do the <laughs> with you know what, 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 does, <laughs> who does it, what does it matter man um, Rod Stewart's 1994 New Year's Eve concert did you know here's a bit of gossip about Rod Stewart Rod Stewart uh, I used I've met his wife yeah I did I did you might think you met Penny see how old I know her name's Penny how, how did you meet Penny ah do you want to know do you really want to know well, here we go. One of my, I had a friend, or she was a colleague or friend at the comedy club. She was the manager there, not Penny, but my friend was. She was close friends with Penny because they were both going to college or university together studying photography. I think it was photography, photography or fashion. Is it either one of them? Either photography or fashion. I think it was photography. It might have been fashion. And uh, so they were friends and Rod Stewart was dating her then. And this was in the 90s. Yeah. I never got to meet him, I don't think. I met her just because she used to come and come drinking with her. and Well, not drinking, but like meet up at the club and stuff. I saw her a couple of times, not to talk to. I don't think, but she, uh, yeah, he's really, Rod Stewart's a really nice bloke. So he holds the top spot in the Guinness Book Records for the largest open air concert in history in Rio de Janeiro. 4.2 million people and it was free. Wow. Wow. 4.2 million people. You think about it though. If you did a concert and everywhere you went you gave the, you did the concert for free. Never charged nothing for no one. Like for the concerts I mean. You would sell so many records, wouldn't you? You just you'd you'd make that money up at treble just by the records you'd sell for the merchandise free concert you'd buy a t-shirt wouldn't you I kissed Rod Stewart or whatever it says on the on the on the t-shirt it's just I mean I didn't kiss Rod Stewart he refused he said no he liked me as a friend so attending music concerts ooh Right, here we go. So, Rod Stewart says to 4.2 million people. I mean, my question, it's just a question. It's not a big question. It's not a large question. It's not a long sentence, but it is a question. 4.2 million people. And there is a picture. 4.2 million people. It looks like ants. That was a very saliva-filled uh, word then, wasn't it? Ants. How could people even hear and I'm surprised how can you fit 4.2 million people on a beach because that's what it was it was a beach it just seems like a lot of people I mean four, t four t that's like 3% of this country's population or something like that no 3% Four four point two million. We've got that'd be ten percent. We have forty forty two million there. We've got about seventy million people in this country. So that's what five seventy million would be seven million. So it's literally six percent of the population. Wow. Right. My, the second is John Michael Jar, 850th anniversary of the Moscow concert. 850th anniversary? 
How he's not that old, is he? But he had three point five million, and where was it though? Um, oh, was it Moscow? It was nineteen ninety seven. Ah, blimey! And you got George Ben Jaws New York Eve concert, three million, and that was where was that? Uh, doesn't say. Oh, Copacabano Beach. So why they said that? They said that it's Copacabano Beach. Didn't they say that at the beginning? With Rod Stewart. Oh, they're making it up now. So yeah, New Year's Eve, George Ben. Michael jo um, John Barr Love Paradise Festival 2008 1.6 million doesn't say that where it was from uh, Australia I think they're very squashed together ooh I wouldn't like that Monsters of Rock Concert 1991 1.6 million wow that, wow blimey the Rolling Stones Bigger Bang Concert 2006 1.5 million so that's what I don't understand like that obviously it looks huge but it doesn't it looks like just as many if not more than the 4.6 million uh, Gene, Gene Michael Jars Rendezvous Houston Concert 1.3 million Gene Michael Jar. Was he? Did it? Didn't he do one of the other ones as well? Gene Michael Jar as well. Blimey! So he's got number two and number four and number seven. No, number eight. Guy gets around. Who is he? Is he? Does he? I don't know what he does. I don't know what songs has he got. Diana Ross for one and for all 1983 number 10 is Paz, Paz Sin Fronteros Concert 2 2009 1.1 million and you get John Michael Jars Bestiality no Bastille Day Concert 1979 who is this bloke He's he's like mate, he's he's in the world record like five times, one million. Nineteen. It was his first performance was during the Bastille Day. Who is he? Ah, oh, I don't know. So Michael Jackson. In nineteen eighty eight, because I had tickets to go and see, the Michael Jackson concert. At Wembley Stadium and I got given to me it's my 18th birthday I got given so I mean I think the the yeah I just I only just started after my birthday I started working uh, probably a couple of weeks later I started working in um, a job that in a factory and the concert was midweek. It was like a Wednesday or something. And I didn't want to have time off on the first week of my work. So I, I kind of just gave the tickets back to whoever got them for me. It was a family member. I didn't go. Crazy, really. I should have just gone. <laughs> I just don't. I, in a situation like that, you, I mean, if I'd been like a nurse or it was a job where people... I mean, of course, they would have depended on me to go, but it wasn't. Um, it wouldn't have been a huge thing if I hadn't been there that day. To to be honest, you know, it wouldn't have made a huge difference. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like a, a brain surgery was going to get missed. It was just some bo You know, someone else would have just come and done the job. So. Yeah, that's, that was a mistake. But during that concert, 
there was you know how the how the newspapers try and make out uh, something's a big deal when it isn't uh, it was they were trying to trying to make out that Michael Jackson might get into trouble if he sings his Dirty Diana song at the first concert that he played at Wembley because um, Princess Diana was actually going to be in the concert or well, not in the concert but watching it in the Royal Box I thought she was the Royal Box in, in, in the Royal Box so she was with Prince Charles who well King Charles now but with Prince Charles so Princess Diana was there and the idea that she would get offended because he was singing a song called Dirty Diana and clearly was he going to change the words of the song but yeah I was just I remember seeing it and thinking this is just silly it's silly she's got a problem kick her out so, you know, she could just go, go, go do a poo during that song and then come back and enjoy the rest of the show. It's it's just, or just do the poo in uh, while you're sitting down and the song will actually be relevant. Don't you, Diana? But yeah, it was, um, what's my favourite song? And I'm, what's my, um, I'm going back to the questions now. What is your favourite joke? Oh dear. I do have a favourite joke, but it's wrong. Just really wrong. So I can't tell you the original version, but I can do a version of it. Don't worry, it's not the, arist the aristocrats. <laughs> um, it is. Okay, I've got to do a version of it. Right, so there's this 21 year old girl female and she is she's gone into basically it's Halloween night she's decided she dressed up all of her friends they all work in a garage her and her friends are all going out to a fancy dress party but they all work in and um, this like a mechanical I think it was fixing buses, to be honest. So they all went in as like versions of what they did as a job. Um, but she was a bus driver. But they all kind of like, they just wanted to do do different versions of that. Someone was a, a bus, um, I think someone went and dressed as a tyre. Another per person went in dressed as a bus stop. Um, and then I think someone went in and, and she went dressed as a welder because they had welders working in the yard, you know, to to fix the buses when they broke down and stuff like that. That wasn't what she did, but... <sighs> so they all arranged to meet. There was Tommy, who was... I think he was the tyre. And she wasn't the only woman that worked there, but it was mainly men that worked there but it was a few there's about five women uh two two of the drivers were women and three of the drivers were men um and it wasn't like that so that's not all the drivers they had in the world it's just that was their particular shift that they did the like the route that they did so she arranged to meet her friends there's like tommy with a tire dresses a tire there was um Sue, who is dressed as oh, blimey, a bus pass or something. I think she was dressed as a bus pass. <laughs> How do you dress as a bus pass? And then there was uh, uh, Paul, who was yeah, dressed as um, a ticket machine. And then there was Robbie, who was... Oh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think he might have been dressed as um, a pump, you know, to pump up tyres. So I think he might be like that. So they all had their individual dresses. Even though it's Halloween, it wasn't like scary, but it was fun. You know, they were young and they were just ready to have some fun. 
so a couple of the couple of her friends the tire and the um they stuck him in the back uh in the boot the there was the what was it the now someone did dress as a ladder but he was on top of the car they stuck him on top and I know it's getting silly don't worry about it and trust me this is much more tasteful than the original the original joke and it goes on a lot longer this one than the original one the original one was just but anyway and the yeah the, 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 the car was full and this this lady um, she was called uh, Madonna and uh, so she was she was named after um, I think it was her one of her aunties or something and they so she she said oh, I'm just gonna go and get in go to the shop is there anything you need to her friends and um, the friends in this in the car said uh, uh, I don't know we'll get some alcohol when we go there so if you can get me some cans of lager and get and what do you want oh what I could do with some um, probably something to eat and if you got some what's it so you got some what's it's maybe a sausage roll and I have a friend as he said what about you to the ladder and he's he said um I don't know really which well, obviously she got out of the car and was looking up at the the roof of the car he said something a coat probably because it's a bit cold up here and she laughed she said no I haven't got any coats but um anything you want from the shop he said no I just like to just get where we're going really and then she shouted what about you do you need anything to the tire he said she said what so, oh God. so as anyone would do in that situation of course she rung him and uh, she asked him so he answered the phone in the boot and said yeah just uh, perhaps you can get me a can of coke she said oh okay and uh, maybe a bit more oxygen that would be nice he said oh <laughs> No, seriously, it's really, really stuffy in there. She said, oh, good one, and put the phone down. So she didn't actually put the phone down. She just pressed the off button and put the phone into her pocket because there was nowhere to put the phone down. There was no tables. There was nothing. So she went into the shop. It was like an off-license uh, news agents sort of thing. So she went in there. And she got the bits she needed to get. And this, she was just bending over getting the, don't worry, it's not going anywhere weird, getting a can. And it was one of those, do you know you get the, the fridges, the stand-up fridges? And then you get the, in the summer sometimes they put them, sometimes they put the drinks into the freezer as well just to get them cold. Well, she got one out of the freezer. So she had to bend over to get it, and which wasn't good because she'd hurt her knee. Her knee, like it was a left knee. But what's weird is she didn't know how she'd done it. So it's like, why, why is it hurting? And then it, it, she noticed that her right knee was hurting, but it was just like an ache, like just only hurt when she walked. But she thought, well, I can't stop walking. I've got things to do and just but you know it wasn't like it wasn't worrying her but it was like oh that's weird wonder how that happened and then she remembered just as she was bending over and why well, just as she was getting up from bending over she remembered that um she did it when she was trying to get something out of the freezer at home so like, oh this is how i did it perhaps i should stop doing this so she stands up and she, she turns around and she bumps into someone. She bumps into a lamppost. And she's like, oh. 
And the lamppost said, what are you doing? Which way are you going, man? And I'm like, oh. And it was a fancy dress person dressed as a lamppost. I said, she said, uh, so why are you dressed as a lamppost? He said, what do you mean? He said, you just all like, just dressed as a lamppost. He said, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean? Not just in my normal clothes. And she thought, oh, I've got to be careful there. Strange. So uh, she said, oh, no, don't worry. So she walks away and she goes into the, the pay for us stuff that she's got. And there's a, a lad over the counter and he's probably about 25. She's not seen him before. I think he's quite new. Uh, she, she said today, are you new? He said, yeah. Well, no, I'm 25. I've been around for 25 years, but I'm new in this job. And she said, that's, that's what I meant. I said yeah and she's all went to pay she'd uh pay for the stuff and everything so she paid paid for it there was a queue queue waiting it was going on a bit too long sometimes uh i think some of the people queuing would think and he started out he said can i ask you a question she said what she he said to her have you ever have you ever ever danced naked in front of a fridge, an open fridge? She said, no. No. He said, oh, okay. She said, oh, can I go now? He said, oh, can I ask you another question? He said, okay. He said, uh, have you ever kissed a fish? Like kissed a fish on the mouth? And she said, no, I haven't. He said, can I go now? She, she said, well, yeah, of course you can go, do what you want, but I just don't know if I could ask you another question. She said, what? What now? She said, he said to her, have you ever held hands with a giraffe and she said oh I get it I get it I gotta stop you there sorry I just gotta let you know I'm not really a welder and she left now that that <laughs> she was dressed as a welder and he's asking stupid questions da 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 Da, 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 da. It's much. It's a better joke the original one. It doesn't go well. Maybe it's. It, but the original one's very rude. I mean, you could argue that one was a little bit rude, but it wasn't really. It was. It was like gentle rude. The other one was more. Um, the original version was much more explicit, and it didn't involve pretty much any of the other stuff that I added onto it. None of the stuff, apart from the costume, that was it. So yeah, I apologise. I am. I feel. I, I just, just. I feel. I feel so, so, so sorry. Okay, um, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Dirty Diana. Dirty Diana Wembley Newspaper Headlines I wonder Will it say anything? 1988 Ah, ah, ah Are you ready? You think I lie all the time Which I do generally uh, Are you ready for this? Wink, wink, Winkipedia Winkipedia says Live at Wembley, July the 16th, 1988. And I, to be fair, I didn't, I wasn't 18 until the August. So I don't know when on earth it was, unless I got it my 17th birthday. No, my 18th birthday. Yeah, I wonder when. Anyway, 
So it, it already, he, I guess he must have come back to Wembley later on. So this is live at Wembley, 16th of July, 1988. The particular concert, okay, it says it here, this particular concert took place on July the 16th, 1988, at Wembley Stadium in Wembley, London, in, in to a sold-out crowd of 72,000, which included Diana, Princess of Wales, and Charles, Prince of Wales. Okay, you ready for this? I mean, what year is it now? 2004, 88, 98, 28, to 88, 98, 2008, 2018. So over, over 22 years. So he, it says here, right, Jackson... I'm guessing they talk about Michael, originally removed Dirty Diana from this night's performance, worried that he would offend Princess Diana or the royal family. However, the princess informed Jackson it was her favourite song. It makes sense, doesn't it? Like, you've got, a na you've got your name in a song, the most famous man let's i mean we've got to argue that she was at that time one of the most if not the one of the most famous females or even people in the entire world you know princess diana there wasn't many places on the planet that didn't know who she was super famous um she was the most famous royal member of the royal family really I know you've got the Queen, but um, as far as popularity and, yeah, so. How cool is that, that he, I guess he must have, somehow it, the, the message got to her, because it was in the papers saying, oh, he's, he's going to remove it because he didn't want to upset them, which is what I said at the beginning, because my memory is so good sometimes and so awful other times. Jackson stated that he was unable to put the song into the set, which led some fans to believe Dirty Diana oh, was not performed on July the 16th. However, leaked audio snippets proved that the song was re-added to the set list. Oh. Okay. Okay, I don't really know what that is. I think let's talk about something controversial, video controversial. According to the official, the video saw some fans have taken concern over the video quality over the portion Jackson talking about. Oh, I don't know what it's talking about, something. So, yeah, I missed out. I mean, that could have been transformational seeing Michael Jackson in concert, seeing him perform. Uh, he was my favourite singer at the time and continue. You know, if, if I had to choose like one singer at the top of my list of, okay, if if it went from, if it was like a truth serum, you know, if I had to tell, you had to tell the truth and instead of listening to my words, you actually had access to all the songs that I've ever played in my life, like on albums, tape cassettes, CDs like from watching movies uh, to streaming who's the person I've listened to the most that's going to be Michael Jackson simple as that uh, you know so I mean Stevie Wonder's going to be up there as well but Michael Jackson is the I think it's because I didn't really discover him. I must have heard his songs when I was growing up, like during the 70s, because he was famous. I think 1972, I think, was his first hit. So I would have grown up listening to him without necessarily knowing who he was or who the Jacksons were. I don't remember Off the Wall coming out. 
because that was like 1979. But I do remember Thriller because that was a huge deal. Thriller and E.T. I mean, there's certain, some things I remember um, when they were being launched, like Star Wars, um, E.T., Superman, although Superman, I was very young when the first Superman came out. But there was, you know, I remember Thriller was such a huge deal. Such a huge deal. And I saw Thriller, the, the, the was it, the video of Thriller, and they, they showed on Channel 4 quite late at night, so maybe like 10 o'clock or something. It was late for me when I was a kid. And I was allowed to sit up to watch it. And the reason we liked it, because... John Landis was the one who made the video and he's the same person that did the American Wealth in London movie which me and my brothers were all big fans of even though we should never have watched stuff like that when I was like 11 but I did and I loved it I loved that movie and um, that was Luke's favorite movie actually my friend my friend his absolute favorite movie and he used to watch it with his sisters and at his at his funeral, I mentioned it, and they were like, "Wow, it's they'd, it's not they'd forgotten, but it's like he told you that." I think they kind of maybe it's one of those big memories that they'd not thought of for a long time. And yeah, so I didn't really get into Michael Jackson probably until Thriller, and then when bad came along like 1987 I think that's probably when I really became like a massive massive fan when I was listening to Michael Jackson like all the time and I was listening to Off The Wall loved the album I was listening to Thriller and Bad I just lied Wow. Someone gave me the Thriller album. Who was it? Oh, no, I didn't lie, but someone did give me a Thriller album. When I was 17 and I was working in... So I didn't have the Thriller album. How weird. Anyway, I used to listen to Off The Wall and... Um, bad because I remember I used to especially on a Sunday I was up in the chip shop and I'd go on a Sunday I'd just crash because I'd be working fairly long hours I wasn't necessarily getting a huge amount of sleep at night just because I was always like planning stuff and <sighs> trying to build a life that never happened but I was always like, oh, I'll do a business business idea and I can do this and do this and do this. And yeah, it didn't, it didn't really occur. But I used to listen to Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder and Terence Strain Derby as well. It's another album I used to listen to like constantly. So on a Sunday, because I always had a Sunday off, I'd go and get, I'd go to the... Uh, news agents and I'd get myself all the papers so all like like the tabloids that is so the Daily Mail the Daily Mirror and the Daily uh, the News of the World and I don't know maybe, maybe that was it maybe three or four so I'd take them home and I'd read them all and have me breakfast and then quite often I'd just go back to bed and I'd just be in bed nearly all day long. And I'd be listening to, you know, Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. And I'd have, I'd, I'd basically have the, in fact, I'm not sure if I even had a bed anymore. I might have just had a mattress on a floor. And I had the uh, tape recorder next to my bed and i just keep turning it over. And that's, that's what I did on Sundays. That was my, my days, my Sundays. Because back then, there wasn't a lot to do. No shops open. 
nothing really was open didn't have any library although i don't think the libraries are open on sundays anyway now but there wasn't anything really around during the day um i didn't really have any money to go and do anything so it's really it's kind of boring really plus in a way i saw so many people like all when i was working all the customers and the people i was working with I didn't feel the need to see human beings on a Sunday, generally. Unless there was like a family lunch or something like that. Then I'd, I'd go and see my nan or, you know, that, something like that. So, really, really became a bit obsessed with Michael Jackson's albums. And then when I was 18, no, I was 17. 17 i got given the thriller album from someone i worked with because i don't think i had the thriller album or like i don't know why i thought i would have had it unless 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 i don't know it's hard to remember but i know that a lady that worked in the co-op supermarket gave me a thriller album i don't know why she gave it to me but she did so that was lovely and there was a, I used to love Elvis when I was a kid as well. And one of the lady, um, dinner ladies, gave me Elvis Presley's greatest hits. I know we were talking about it at the dinner table, and she said, "Oh, I've got an album you can have." I don't know why, and I just I didn't think anything of it. And she came back the next day, and she brought me this his 50 greatest hits and it was I think I had a red red cover well, how lovely is that and it was like double double album just gave it to me so yeah from that from then on you know if it was regarding 87 86 87 88 and then I just loved, I went through a period and it was like always bad, listening to bad all the time, the album. And then 91, uh, 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 Dangerous came out. It was like November, I think. It was like, yeah, it was around that time. I think it was winter. Maybe it was autumn, but it was near the end of 91, I do believe. And I listened to that album. I loved it. It was like every single song. The same as I did with Bad. Every single song. The way as I did with Thriller. The way I did with Off The Wall. And I think the reason that is. It's the only singer. Who I've bought an album. It's not the only singer that I bought an album. That I liked every single song. Because I've got a few albums like that. But it's never been one singer that's had produced as many albums as that that I liked all the songs on. So I loved all the songs on Off The Wall. I loved all the songs off of Thriller. All the songs off of Bad. All the songs off of Dangerous. And all the songs off of History. And all the songs off of Invincible. Invincible, which was about 2001, yeah, it, it was, I loved it, but I didn't, I like it more now than I did back then. When, I, when it first came out, it, was, it wasn't quite, it was a different kind of level to the others. I'm not sure how to explain it, but um, the excitement wasn't there the way it was in his previous, his last recording, previous to that, which was history, which was 1995, and I remember listening to it for the first time. I got the got the tape, stuck it in my recorder because so I think I bought the tape and I went home, and I had to get some batteries for my tape recorder, like my headphones, or whatever, or the batteries for the recorder. Um, it wasn't like a snazzy thing, just a general tape player, you know. 
Although I did once have a sport tape tape player. What did they used to call them? They were yellow ones. Um, but they were really good quality. Yellow sport tape players. All yellow sports Sony Walkman. Blimey, you can still buy them. Now, yellow tape, so it's a sports Walkman, that's it. And they were really good. So I'm just seeing pictures of them now. They were the best quality ones you could buy at the time. And uh, I think I might, I might have got one in the 90s. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. Probably got stolen or something. But yeah, wow. Such good quality. And the headphones weren't particularly good. They were still like little little headphones, little foams. You know, didn't cover your ear or anything. But the quality was so much better than the other the other um you know tape players but I didn't have one of them at the time but I did get one eventually maybe it was the late 90s when I got one of them so it was and it was also it might have also had a radio player because from the looks of this it had a radio player as well FM and AM but they were never great quality sound for the radio because unless if you were static then maybe if you like not static as in but I mean like if you were in one place so I used to that uh, I just remember what I don't know if I was on the way to work or I was on the way somewhere anyway I remember leaving the house and listening to history the first or was it dangerous dangerous no it's history history and listening to it and I think I was like wow it was so good like the first side was all a lot low it was old stuff so what I had to do, I think, if I remember rightly, I re, I fast forwarded it, so I could listen to the second side first, because that was all his new music. And I was like, whoa, dangerous, in no memory, dangerous, ooh ooh ooh. Oh, that's great. And you are not alone was my favourite song off of that album and I had a, a girlfriend who had a little kid like a baby actually and this baby was I don't know how old still in a cot but like uh, couldn't walk yet so it was that age like really little still but toddler kind of but I don't know a year old maybe and whenever he cried, I'd sing. I'd sing to him. I'd sing the a Michael Jackson song, and he'd cry even more. <laughs> no, even he'd, he'd stopped. He stopped crying. And he, we had this connection. I don't know why. It was very strange. Not just that, but he just. I'd hold him, and he stopped crying. He really liked me a lot. We kind of bonded. I don't, I don't understand why, but it was a real connection there. And um, I remember my girlfriend's dad phoned me up once and said that the the little boy, her my girlfriend's son, was in hospital, had an asthma attack. So, and she was with him. So, and this was in Whitechapel, I think, hospital. So I make my way there. I get there, I don't know what time it was, it was in the evening, I think I got there. And she, she's naked because she's been there for ages. And and he looks up at me and he just puts his arms out for me to pick him up. I was so dark. And 
she, I sent her home. Well, I didn't send her home. I said, just go get some rest. And she was like, well, no, someone's need to watch him. Um, I know the nurses were there, but I said, look, I'll just watch him all night. You come back tomorrow morning, get some sleep, get some food. I'll stay with him tonight and I'll just watch him all night and you come back and then I'll, then I'll go home and get some sleep. It was what I did. So I was there from about, I don't know, early evening. She went home, came back three weeks later and no, she came back the next day. She was, yeah, it, she, it was really weird. Very, very weird that was, to be honest. I'm there watching this little baby, and it's still a baby, a, a year old, maybe 10 months old. And just, yeah. Never forget that, actually. He was fine. He, he came out the next day came home and everything but just yeah it was very it's quite um a moving experience actually i don't know why i'm talking about that to be honest it might be because she was one of the only one of the the main people in my life like girlfriends that i could have actually had a, a life with but unfortunately there was problems with her husband now before you judge they were separated they weren't with each other, but he was causing so much problems that she had to move away. And it just got in the way of our relationship. I mean, I was, I would have probably married her, to be honest with you. But hey, it's quite weird to think that that child would be now you think what was that let's say he was a year old at the beginning of 96 2006 2016 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so it's going to be like 20 um 96, 2006, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So yeah, it's going to be a lot older now. It's amazing. It's amazing. I just think just like, just wow. You'd be nearly 30 or 27, 28, whatever. It's like, how? 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 Yeah. Imagine how old I'll be in 2024. So I think, I don't know. I'm thinking I might have answered your questions. I don't know. I think I might have done. I hope I did. I know that um maybe uh this is a i haven't taken quite as long to answer as i normally do <laughs> um but yeah i've answered as far as quirky things that on um vinnie does keep calling him andre as, as the weird things that vinnie does i don't he's just really I was thinking about this, the amount of things that he does that are similar to Andre. You know, even walking up the stairs exactly the same way that Andre did, right against the wall. Um, he said, well, all dogs do that. N no, not all dogs. I've, I've, Logie, he used to, he used to run up in the middle of the stairs. Andre used to go right against the steep, edge of the wall which is quite normal for a ferret to do because they they generally like to walk along the wall but not along the wall but like against the wall and Vinny does the same thing and it's actually he you can see his feet prints where he walks up and down every day it's worn out not worn out but it's like it's 
just clean it. it doesn't make any difference he's just he's left his mark on the stairs for the last blimey what is it now it's august now september october september october november december four months time it will be nearly two years i've had that little beautiful boy nearly two years wow and you know what else two months time september october i start my university degree so i've kind of got things to look forward to not not i mean yeah i have that that's something to look forward to and someone did ask uh, am i whether or not i was going to stop doing these recordings I must have said something in the recording where I might have implied that perhaps I was going to stop doing them. I don't, I don't know, maybe. But I don't have any intention of continuing. No, I don't have any intention of stopping. I mean, because it seems that some people like them, like these, whatever they are. I don't think this is like anything else that anyone else does. It might be exactly the same as what lots of people do. I don't know. I've not done the research, to be honest with you. But it is... I guess it feels different to anything that I've seen or heard, apart from all the other recordings that I've done, which are probably quite similar. Yeah. 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 So that's it really. <laughs> I got now else to see. So I'm gonna go we got boxing on this weekend, so I'm gonna be the boxing starts on Saturday at ten o'clock yeah, ten o'clock in the evening and it goes on all night long. Probably for about yeah, till about six, maybe seven in the morning. It's a marathon. I mean, literally a marathon. So I don't know how I'm going to get through. It's going to be an endurance test, really. But it's okay. I just, I'm so used to going to bed early, like te going to bed at 10 and getting up at maybe 4 or 5 or 6. So to stay up at exactly the same time as I'm normally asleep will be a little bit different. A little bit. But sometimes, yeah, I just 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 see. Hopefully, it'll be it'll it'll be fine. I know it will be. So I'm gonna go. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, um, because you're part of this. You're part of this recording. So I appreciate um. Yeah, being part of it for watching the videos or listening to re the recordings. Thank you. And you're the reason I do this. So remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. I think I'm going to treat myself to a poo.